Hey, this is Spiky Drummer again, and uh, because of your request video requests on my video, I have decided to work especially with this one by a guy named Verbizzle101. Thank you very much for your request. It's a very, very, uh, very, very important thing that I think I overlooked. And you said most drum drum teachers overlook this. Not me. Not anymore. We're gonna do it right now. Okay. So Verbizzle asked me to do a video about uh, timing with rolls. It's very stupid of me not to uh, cover this because it's extremely important, especially for beginner drummers. I remember when I first started playing, I played at my church, you guys probably know that by now, and uh, I, was, I was so scared to get into the drum roll area. It scared me to death because <laughs> when you're playing live and you get into a drum roll and you come back in and it's the absolute wrong time, you are the most embarrassed person alive, even though nobody really cares and probably doesn't even notice. If there's a musician out there, it makes them have a headache. And it makes you have a headache, especially because you're the one who screwed everybody up. And then your music leader or, uh, you know, the, the lead singer or, or the guitarist gives you dirty looks. And we don't want that, so we're going to prevent that. As you may know by now, you count your drum rolls, or you count your drum, drum beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's consistent for a reason, because everyone that you're playing with has to follow that same time meter in most cases. You hear it when uh, band conductors count off their, their band. One, two, three, four. Everyone's playing along that same time signature. Well, none of that changes when you go to uh, leave your drum beat to venture into a drum roll. Now, basically, it's kind of like outer space. Now, this is how I pictured it as a kid. When you're in outer space and you jump off the spaceship and you have one of those tie-ons, you better come back to the ship because you can just keep going and the ship's going to go the other way. And yeah, if your tie-on breaks, you're gone. So that's the same thing with a drum roll. You're venturing away from the spaceship and you better have a tie-on, which is your time signature, because if you break that, it's going to be forever before you get back to the drum, uh, the drum ship. That's what we're going to call it. Before you get back to the drum ship, um, so it's going to be forever before you get back to the drum ship. Stay on to that drum beat. If you have to count it in your head, in your head, do it. Okay, so your bass is going to be on one and three, and your snare on two and four. Um, that that doesn't change. Only you're taking your drum beat and you're removing it, and you're adding a drum roll there. So I'm going to show you what it sounds like, and then I'm going to explain it to you. you can count in your head one two three four while you're playing the drum roll if you can hear the band sometimes you'll be able to get to the point where you can hear everybody and know when to come right back in and you can time it that way but this stuff takes practice everybody screws up on this so don't worry you're going to snap that safety line many times before you get this right basically just count it when you're playing your drums one two three four one two three four one Okay, your crash is going to be on one. That's starting the new drum beat. A lot of times this messes people up. Keep counting. One, two, three, four, crash. You're going to have a full measure on the toms. And then you're going to start back on the next measure um, on, the, uh, on the drum beat again. Your crash is going to be on one of the next drum beat, which you're going to be hitting your bass already. All right, listen for me to count, and I'm going to start right back on the drum beat, on one, with the crash at the end of my drum roll. It's going to be seamless. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One. And if it's seamless, then you did it 